As General Green put it, uh, he says, we rise, we fight, we run. Uh, we stay just far enough ahead of them to keep them interested but never fully engaging them unless it proves to be advantageous to do so. Uh, the Battle of Calpins, uh, Guilford Courthouse, these are good examples of that, uh, and where many able officers were involved in that, including Major Marion, uh, besides General Nathaniel Green. At this point in March 1781, the British Army was struggling. General Cornwallis went to Wilmington to get resupplied. General Green headed south for yet more battles at Hobkirk's Hill in 96. This is the cabin at 96. This is an old road that dates back to revolutionary times. They don't allow bicycles on this trail, but it's a nice walking trail. This is the fort at the Battle of 96. Finally, in June of 1781, there is a clear American victory as the British are pushed out of Augusta, Georgia. Today we're in Augusta, Georgia along the Savannah River. By the end of July 1781, the focus of attention was on Virginia. General Cornwallis and his army had arrived in Yorktown, and General Lafayette, General Wayne, and Baron von Steuben had begun to take aim at Cornwallis. Uh, where General Green, of course, had arrived, General Lafayette was there, General Wayne, and numerous others, uh, the British had uh, set up fortifications. But now they had uh, the water to their rear and the continental, combined continental and French army uh, all around them. Uh, of course, General Rochambeau uh, had joined us with uh, his thousands of French troops, and the French and American troops combined numbered around 20,000. And we're a British regular unit, and you see us wearing our campaign dress. Today we're in Yorktown, Virginia. By the 1750s, the town was a thriving seaport supporting a prosperous waterfront business district with wharves, warehouses, and pubs. Daily and modern homes, outbuildings, stores, church, taverns, and government buildings filled the bluff overlooking the river. York River on my left. See, the, the French and the Americans outnumber the British two to one. 
Uh, we've got bigger guns. The British have been campaigning around in the south, so they have all these light guns that they can move around quickly. They were traveling pretty light and would move fast. They have six pound guns. Uh, I think the largest guns they have around here are 12 pounders, just field guns. Uh, the French and Americans, we bring these huge guns. We bring, you know, 32 pound guns, 24 pound guns. So these guns, our cannon are a lot bigger. They're going to do a lot more damage. Uh, we have a lot better range. Uh, we, we outnumber them by a huge margin. The only thing they can do is run away. And they're not going to be able to do that if a storm comes up on the, on the river. <laughs> And right about this time, uh, we have gotten his lordship in a real fix. Uh, last night, he tried to get his troops over to Gloucester Point by putting them into small boats and running them across the river, try to break out on that side and march up and join up with General Clinton from New York. Uh, fortunately for us, unfortunately for him, we had one of the neatest thunderstorms you've seen in a long time, and it just drove his boats downriver and swamped a lot of them. By the time he got his act together, it was daylight, and he couldn't go across because the French batteries up here had sank all his ships. I think it's just a matter of days before the British are going to just, they're going to have to give up because <clears throat> the British fleet has been overwhelmed by the French and I think Cornwallis is just stubborn, He'll probably wait until the last moment. Can you tell me about the siege at Yorktown? Yes, well of course we had them completely surrounded. They, they had water to their rear uh, because they were there. Uh, at, at the harbor and, uh, and, and that was blocked uh, by the French fleet so that the English fleet when it eventually did arrive after a small engagement turned around and returned to New York uh, and then of course they had the entire continental and French armies in front of them. The main thing we had to do at Yorktown was wait it out but we also had to get in close enough to threaten them. Our guns could not reach them from the way they had their fortifications. Uh, they had several redoubts out in front of them. These are small man-made forts designed to, usually holding a hundred men or so along with cannon, and they're designed to stop any assault on the main fortifications themselves. And so uh, one of the gentlemen, one of the officers who led the assault in the middle of the night on, on the redoubt uh, was Colonel Hamilton. He had been pestering me for some time that he wanted to see action because I kept him at headquarters. I finally gave Colonel Hamilton consent to lead one of the attack forces. Another was led by General Lafayette himself. Um, the, the result, of course, was uh, we captured those redoubts in the middle of the night with not losing a man and had killed or captured all of its occupants. Uh, we then moved into French siege cannons and the next morning when General Cornwallis woke up, he could see that the end was at hand. We ceased a cannonade on his fort until eventually uh, he sued for peace terms by having a drummer boy go up on the parapet and uh, play the sound uh, for a ceasefire. Surrender Road. 
The course of the road here is about as it was in colonial times. On October 19, 1781, in the afternoon, the soldiers of Cornwallis' army marched this way and filed off into the field on your left. This was the place designated for the formal capitulation of the British garrison.